Zephaniah. Zephaniah is one of the minor prophets. Heavy on judgment. Heavy. Serious. We're going to be looking into the second advent. Studying the word of God. The word of the Lord came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gadariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, which would which would be Hezekiah, so wrong, other way, I don't mean wrong, in the days of Josiah, the son of Amon, who was a son of Amon, and his father <coughs> Manasseh were, were wicked kings in Judah, <coughs> but Manasseh got right, king of Judah. So we know the time frame is Judah has not been taken captive. So we're going to look at pre-Jeremiah warning to Judah about their sins. And when we read about Jeremiah and Lamentations and the endings of Kings and all that, and we read about Nebuchadnezzar coming in three times and attacking Judah, and destroying it, you can't say, well, you know, God is mean, and God did not warn. And you say, you know, it's, it's terrible America today, we got these Kentucky floods. But my answer to that is, well, what about Kentucky bourbon? Don't they make bourbon? What's going on in America? Sin. God's warning. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, that would be Judah, saith the Lord. This is that loving, peaceful God that hates the sin and loves the sinner. Well, what are you going to do? I will consume man and beast. I will consume fowls of the of the heaven. Boy, this sounds like Noah. As in the days of Noah. What about the days of Judah? And the fish of the sea. Well, that wasn't Noah's time. The fish survived. But this can also take you back to Egypt, where man and beast and birds and fish died. And when you start running back to Exodus, a historical book, and yet a prophetical book to the tribulation period, You can't change history because history will repeat itself. The stumbling box with the wicked. Now that there's that wicked, the wicked. And I always told you that could be a reference to the Antichrist, the wicked one. And there's ever going to be stumbling blocks in the tribulation period. It's going to be set by the Antichrist. One of them stumbling blocks for the Jews of dire straits is that mark, is that image. You say, well, how serious is that image of the beast? Go back and read Daniel in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Nicole. Wouldn't it be interesting that that beast would be the image and having a relationship to music? I will cut off man from off the land. And that cut off for the nation of Israel in the law 
You died and went to hell. And there are preachers, you know, they're stuck on adultery and, and sodomy and, 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 and you know, you're going to go to hell and murder. going to go to hell. You're going to die. There are other sins in the law that says, I'll cut you off. Say it to Lord. So God is speaking. Zephaniah is writing. Inspiration. I'm going to say this just once. If there is a word of God in the tribulation period that you're to follow of the very words of God, you better make sure you have the right word of God. You better make sure you have the right Bible. I will, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now we're going to Nebuchadnezzar. But we're also going into the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, we talk about America celebrating sodomy, gay marriages. I've seen countless videos of such celebrations going on in Jerusalem by the Jews. That irritates God. I will cut off the raiment of Baal, that's the high false god. He's the sun god. Asterisk is the moon god, his sweet by. And their children are Balaam, B-A-A-L-I-M. The name of the Sherinims with the priests. Now those Sherinims, the one of the name meanings for them is the black one. Associated with priests, they're the black priests. Do you know an organization that their priests wear black? Now that priest there being in Judah, that would be the Levites. Now remember when we studied Israel with Hosea, when we read priests, that wasn't the priest the Levites, that was the priest of Baal. In Judah you got the Levitical priesthood and you got the Baalite priests. Of the two pre-mentioned kings of Manasseh and Amon. Jeremiah tells us that there's an altar on every street corner. There is a church. A temple. Steeples. Called high places. Everywhere in Jerusalem and in the temple. And there are Levitical priests running around, and there are Baalite priests running around. And then that worship the host of heaven, that's the Balaam. That's the stars. That's Orion. That's Scorpio, Libra. My lucky stars. When you wish upon a star, star bright, star light, blankety blank, 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 bright. Are you a star? I'm going for stardom. I'm going to go to the city of angels. I'm going to open up my newspaper and I'm going to look for the horoscope. And find out my day. They go on top of their house and they look to the heavens. And when they look to the heavens, the sight, what, what Paul says in Romans chapter 1, they didn't see God, they saw God's.
the Mormons believe that, you know, if we marry multiple wives, have multiple children, we're going, and they'll tell you, we're going to go populate planets and, and what have you out there. I don't know, but I don't know if they look to the heavenly stars at night and say, son, you know, one of them could be yours. And I look at my children and say, children, one day all that's going to fervently melt. Along with this earth and everything you've got, it's going to be fervent heat. It's going to go, go, go boom. And we'll have a new heaven, a new earth. You won't have rover. And if there's space junk on the moon, if we went to the moon, and I don't believe we did. House tops in, in June, and they're just like a porch. <clears throat> Peter was on the house top while they were making dinner. Fell asleep. He wouldn't have been worshiping. And then that worship. And that swear by the Lord. Now look at that. Look at that. They swear by Jehovah Lord. And yet they're worshiping gods. Falling gods. All the stars. Their, their, their astronomy. Their horoscope. Baal. And they're swearing by Jehovah. Let me say it. They're going to Baptist church, but they don't worship the God of the Bible. I'm not going to say they're lost, but many of people go, I'm talking about Baptist church. Many of them go to the Baptist church. Many are not saved. And they may cry the cries and worship the worship of the Baptists. They may go home to Jim Beam, Budweiser, Marlboro. They just had that, that, that mega millions lottery. How many God calling worshiping, swearing by Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, went out there for the purpose that, oh, I could win the billion dollars. Come on, Jesus. I'll give half to the church and you and give a dime to the church now. To which I posted, leave it to me to, to put a damper in a wet rag, all the people who got rich by those things and now today their lives are bankrupt. Sort of like Donald Trump. And then that are turned back from the Lord. So see, they, some swear by the Lord in false God worship. I don't know. Let me give you two names. Asterisk, Estar, and Taman. And yet Paul tells us there's another Jesus. Well, here in verse 6, there are people who are served Jehovah, Old Testament Jews, and they turned away from Jehovah. Those that have not sought the Lord, and whatever, whoever, whatever, but not God nor inquired by him. They didn't ask counsel of God. Now, Proverbs has been written by Solomon. The book of Proverbs, the writings of Solomon, tell counsel is of the Lord. They don't even pray to the Lord. Some, again, speaking about the Baptists, some Baptists go to prayer night for the so intense to get gossip about their brethren. I've heard it. I've heard the rumors. They'll take someone's prayer and they'll turn it hey, you hear what's going on with them? <laughs> Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. Well, that's definitely not the siege of Babylon because the Lord didn't show up. That's not really the first coming of Jesus Christ. Though Jesus is God, 
And Lord, he didn't come the first time. For the vengeance we're going to read about, he came for salvation. He came as the Lamb of God. He came into the world to save the world, to seek that which is lost. The second coming of Jesus is entirely different. Because what is it? For the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, pay attention to that, is at hand. Is that what? Well, wait a minute. Let's see what here. See where you got this written at? Well, approximately, I can't see, about 625 BC. I'll get annoying. About six. 60 BC. It has been over 2,500 years since Zephaniah said the Lord's at hand for the second advent. It has been approximately 2,000 years since the birth of Jesus. That the second advent is not at hand yet. Now, am I saying it's not coming? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying when, when the Bible says God's long suffering, <laughs> we read the other night, Terry, but wait, it will come. See, th this is where it throws people off, and even the time of Paul. They got tired. They got fed up. They said there is no resurrection. Some even, I don't know how they said it, but they said the resurrection is past. The church is going to go into apostasy. And there people th feel like right now with everything going on, you know, the, the rapture could be any time. There is no dating. But it said there'll be a falling away. I hear a lot of people say, they're looking to the rapture, looking to the rapture. Are they really being real? Or is it just, you know, is it just like words to amazing grace? You know, amazing grace is played and sung at military. It's played and, and sung at School out. It, it's pray. It's it, it's just, you know everybody knows the tune to Amazing Grace, but do they really believe in the words of Amazing Grace? Our God's long long suffering. Our God. It's false to charge God. Well, why do everybody? Jesus, before he gone to the cross, said, "Listen, I could call down legions of angels." At the time of Noah, God could have said, Noah, no. I'm not telling nobody. Just drown the whole world right now. He told Moses, no, no, I'm not going to tell him. I'm just going to wipe Israel completely out. No. You realize at any moment, the, the extreme, there is no pain and suffering that no one has ever experienced outside of Jesus Christ. And on the cross, when he said it is finished, he's talking about our salvation. He's not talking about mankind. And if there's anything to show that has been replacement theology and has been... Uh, hampered today in false teaching is God's all finished with the Jews then God's all finished with his patient the very fact is that Jacob's trouble is God pulling the pants down and Israel smacking their behind and then the second advent God coming up you come put your arms around me son. let's go home and that's a reversal of the prodigal son that's the father coming and getting the son. Come on, let's go home. 
Let's get the shoes. Let's get the wardrobe. Let's kill the fatty cab. Let's put the ring on your finger. Let's go celebrate. <laughs> what about my brother? He's in hell. I had to trample him. Hold thy peace at the present of the Lord for the day of the Lord. That's, in, that's important. Is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. That's an offering. That sacrifice is what he did on the cross. He has bid his guests. That's not the church. Those wise virgins that had the oil, that's not the church. There's a difference between a guest of the wedding and the bride of the wedding and the bridegroom. The bride will be with Jesus at the second advent. Israel is the guest. John the Baptist is the guest. All those that could not hold out and wait out and their oil failed, they get trampled. And shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Right, this is the second advent. I will punish the princes, the king's children. Well, in, in Judah with Babylon, the king's children were taken to Babylon, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. And this is interesting, such as clothed with strange apparel. Now the law is coming back. And that strange apparel could be wool and cotton, polyester, and or it could just be you look around at people today and go, "Do you want it?" In the same day, Lord's return. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. I mean, these are the people who did not trust in Jesus. They will die and go to hell in their own sins and pay for their own sins. In the same day, also will I punish those that leap on the threshold. I have no idea. Well, it was an interesting remark of the threshold of Dagon. How they don't tread the threshold of Dagon because Dagon met Jehovah one day and fell down and worshipped him. Which filled their master's houses with violence and deceit. So who's ever working, who's ever doing the threshold, they're servants. And they're servants of corruption. There's that word again, violence. That's the same word that shows up with Noah. So Jesus said, now listen to me, hold on to me, but let's get the proper tea. As the days of Noah and the church goes, hey, this is a time of rapture. Zephaniah says, as in a time of violence, I'm going to destroy it all, including fish, like the days of Noah. We're not talking about the rapture. We're talking about the second advent. Jesus wasn't talking about the rapture. He was talking about the second advent. So what do you do? Two women are at the mill and one, one is taken and one's left. Two men are in the field. So every one of two people in church, if the rapture happens, they're going to go, even if they're saved or not. Let's say the rapture happens at church and you've got 50 people in church. 25 are going to heaven and 25 are staying. And if they're saved or not, well, congratulations, you are now teaching uh, Calvinism. There is a mid-tribulation rapture that you don't hear much spoken about. 
The days of Noah that Jesus talked about is the days of Zephaniah who God's talking about. But you wouldn't know that as a Baptist Christian because you don't study Zephaniah. You don't study the minor prophets. You don't look into the Old Testament, but the, the great famous books, if there's such a thing. And like I said with, with, with Habakkuk, Let's say by chance of your Bible, I'll even say modern Bible, whatever Bible, your, your Bible, though modern Bibles are wrong, okay? Hear that, Bob? Let's say by chance, for whatever reason, your Bible is left behind with Zephaniah or Habakkuk. Whatever, however, well, the other, the sixty-four books are gone. You have been kidnapped. You you disappear off the earth like many people are right now today. And the cops come and they need your DNA. Ninety-eight percent of the Christians, if the police were to go through Habakkuk and Zephaniah, could not even get a spot of your DNA. Many Christians, 94% of them, Habakkuk and Zephaniah and Haggai in the next book, had not even seen the daylight. This is why you go, oh, the days of Noah, the church, no. Haven't we been reading about the days of Noah? Violence in the land, I'm going to destroy all men. I'm going to destroy all animals. God is angry. God, we're going to talk about wrath. We're going to have a moment, cloudy day. Now, I know one pastor down south in Belusia County, he will say that there are Christians in the Old Testament. You are in dangerous territory. It shall come to pass... In that day, pay attention to that, saith the Lord, that there shall be a noise of the cry from the fish gate and a howling from the sick. Now, you want those fish gates? You don't go to the Pauline epistles. You go to Nehemiah. When he's rebuilding the city walls, there you'll find the fish gate. And whatever the, second, the next gate after that. He lines up all the gates in order. Now, you know what, maybe what a Christian will follow the Bible. Well, the gates in New Jerusalem. We're not looking at gates in New Jerusalem. Now, Zach, uh, uh, Ezekiel will talk about the millennial kingdom and the millennium city. And I don't know if he gives the gates their names, but some of them he does. You see, the Christian right there was a fish gate. Well, you know, be ye fishers of men. That was to Jewish fishermen going to get Jewish people. Now, you can use, you're the salt of the earth. You can use that um, figuratively. You can use that for a, for a message but doctrinally, it goes to the Jews, not the church. Put your salt on the fish, and that fish is going to dry up. <clears throat> a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hill. Howl, ye inhabitants of Mechtish, for all the merchant people are cut down. All right, let's put this in the tribulation period. Why would the merchant people be cut down? Well, that you can't buy or sell unless you got the mark, so they all have the mark. If you got the mark of the beast, you just might as well kiss your butt goodbye. You're going to hell. Now, is there a way to undo that mark? And I've heard a few preachers, and I let. And it sounds like you maybe could. 
But the merchants in Jacob's trouble, you have to have the mark. What's the merchants would be in Jeremiah's time? Well, they're probably selling stuff to Baal. They're probably selling all kinds of things. We just read in the previous book the liquor license. We read another place where they're selling their child for some shoes or selling their daughter for some booze. We just read in Zephaniah, they're deceitful, they're lying. They just had, like I said, I read the headline. They just had a car deal, I'm not going to mention the company. A massive, a massive recall. I bet you the, the salesman that sold them car, oh, it's a great, reliable car, it's a wonderful, great car, and you get that letter in the mail. <laughs> you lie. I, I love it one time, my grandpa. My grandpa was a sensible, saved man. Man, he, he, people called him stingy, but he wasn't. And I remember I went with him one time, and he bought brand new cars. And we were at the dealership. I was sitting there, and my grandpa was about to give the guy the cash or check. And this guy is trying to sell everything to him. And at one point, he, he told my grandpa, he said, you know, with this car, and I don't know, warranty or guarantee, I don't know. He said, if you get this, you, you get it bumper to bumper and bump to bump, 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 for X amount of dollars. And my grandpa uh, was writing, I guess, the check, and he looked up, he said, oh, wait a minute. He says, is this a good car you're selling me? He says, oh, yeah, it's a great car. It's a, it's a well-worthy car? He goes, yeah. And this warranty will help. You know, this repair, that repair, this. He goes, yeah, yeah. He said, well, if this car is so wonderful and great, then what do I need that warranty for? Mm -hmm. And he got up and he says, I, I don't want your car. And we left. If, you, if your product's so wonderful, so great, you don't need a warranty. And they that bear silver are cut off. That's means of money. Silver in the Bible is redemption. There was in the law where you had to give silver payment for redemption. It went to the priest. If it's a religious aspect, is Penance. Burning a candle for your loved one. It shall come to pass at that time. This is all future. This is all pathetic. This is all going to happen. And many, because I'm pick because because I'm Baptist. Many of your Baptists are going to be quite shocked when we get to heaven. And they don't know what's going to unfold. You know, like, oh, we're in the last days. Blah, blah, blah. And they're going to be quite shocked to realize and see what we see. I don't know how much we're going to see and how much we're going to know. And have Zephaniah come walking up to you. Why are you worrying? Didn't you read my book? Who are you? Zephaniah. Weren't you one of the tribes of Israel? I will search Jerusalem with candles. I will punish the men that are settled on their leaves, that's stubborn, that's hard. It has to do with winemaking. To make it more potent. That say in their heart. Now, search with candles, that means it's at night. <laughs> The Lord will not do good. Well, that's, that's terrible. Neither will he do evil. 
Are there any, and I'm not talking about religions, but let's talk about religion. Is there anybody in a pulpit or a podium that will get up and say, God won't do you no harm? God wouldn't send them to hell. Read any Bible you want. I have to throw that one in there. You know what they're saying? If God's going to search with candles, why? Because they're hiding. If God's not going to do good and God's not going to do evil, that means he's not going to do anything at all. Therefore, their goods, and say that God's not going to do nothing, shall be a booty. Some, they're going, someone else is going to own them. Their houses of desolation are going to be evicted. And they shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and not drink the wine. Now, this is, this is found in the law, and this is found in the law for those that worship other gods. And turn from God. And this is where God said the enemy is going to come in and he's going to take over, which they do. Which Babylon does, the Chaldeans do, and the, and the Assyrians do in Israel. And probably what the Antichrist is going to do with the Jews in the tribulation period when they run. Because Jesus said, don't look back. Remember Lot's wife? Did you get that? That's not church age. And if you're out in the field, don't go back to get a coat or whatever. Run! And by the way, that field you left, that house you left, it ain't yours no more. It's going to be somebody else's. You shall plant the vineyards, plural, but not drink the wine thereof. That's found in the law. As a judgment against God's people for going against God. That great day of the Lord is near. Okay, that is the, that is the second advent. Near. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near. <laughs> Somebody want to tell me what calendar God's using? Because he's not using the Roman Pope Gregorian calendar. What do you do with that verse? And hastily, greatly. <laughs> okay, Lord. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The voice of the day of the Lord? The voice of the day of the Lord? What is that? There's a sword that's coming out of Jesus' mouth at the second advent. The Bible says the word of God is as a sword. That creator that said in the beginning, he said, let there be, let there be. God said, let there be. It was. That creator, that God, I don't know what he's going to say at the judge, at the great white, uh, at the second advent. I don't know what he's going to say, but it's going to happen. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. Those are his enemies. He ain't going to be no mighty anymore. A day, that day is a day of wrath, second advent. Another prophet told us, What would you desire the day of the Lord? It's not light, it's darkness. A day of clouds. Rightly dividing the scriptures. You better read all 66 books of the Bible. Don't read books about the Bible. Read the books in the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, the King James books of the Bible, because if you have any other Bible, they may erase, they may change. And you wouldn't understand what a replacement word for excess would be, though it's not in your common English language. Again, I had to say that. It's a day of trouble, distress, a day of waste, 
darkness and desolation, a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of... Oh, there's that what the other prophet said, a day in thick darkness. There's no light, artificial or natural, at the seventh year of the tribulation. I, I knew somebody, but, oh, I can't wait to the day of the Lord. I can't wait to the day of the Lord. And I read her those two passages. Many Christians out there, many Baptists don't even understand the day of the Lord, that day of the Lord, the rapture. They don't rightly divide because they don't read their Bible. And many churches, I gotta say it is, they don't rightly divide because they don't have the proper Bible. But it is now beyond a, 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 a fact of the Bible. In verse 15, we are speaking, and we're, we're going to get in trouble in verse 16, but we are speaking definitely of the second advent to return the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay, ready? Here we go. Verse 16, we have a trouble. We have problem. The day of the trumpet. Okay. So let me I would get this one next time. First that's the one four. Alright, first that's only four. Verse sixteen. This is where Christians get in a big error. This is where you cannot change the word of God. Ready? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. It sounds like a voice, doesn't it? Didn't we just read the voice of the day of the Lord? Uh, properly with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise. See, there's a rapture. All right, go back to Zephaniah. I'll show you an error. People don't know what their Bible says. And they're men, teachers. Verse 16. The day of the trumpet alarm. See, there's the rapture. Where am I wrong? Where am I wrong? Look at verse 14. Even the, the voice of the day of the Lord. All right, take that with what we just read in 1 Thessalonians 4. Where am I wrong? Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Now I know which, which one. Uh, all right, verse 16. The voice, right, and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. It's not a voice. The voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise. All right, let's go back. Let's just properly do this right. Chapter 1, I'm in chapter 3. All right, let's read it. Okay. Verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. See, that'd be the oh, rapture. Okay. It is near. It is hastily you see, even Paul said, right? The voice of the day of the Lord. What was the voice of the church? Rapture. It's the voice of the archangel. Who's the only archangel in the Bible? Gabriel. No. He's never an archangel. Rightly divided. I read the other day, it said there was there's Raphael. I don't know where they got Raphael from. Michael is the only archangel in the Bible. Michael, according to Daniel, is the angel over Israel. So when Michael speaks, we now enter into a Jewish time. Did you get that? When Michael, the archangel, said, time for Jacob's trouble, <laughs> whatever he says. All right, let's run the other thing. Verse 16. A day of the trumpet alarm of the fenced city. Is that what Paul said? No, what Paul said is another discussion and another Pharisee of the church today. The church is looking for Donald Trump, not the Trump of God.
By the way, do you know what? <laughs> I read this the other day. I, I'm more English than I am American. Maybe someone stole me away. If I had a British accent, man, you wouldn't shut me up. Do you know what English, you know, English has a lot of definitions Americans don't. They have such a, and Americans hate the English language. That's another problem. They're rebelling against the English over tea taxes. And how many taxes we have today, I don't know. Americans don't drink tea today. Uh, do you know what Trump, you know what Donald means? Donald means a world leader. That scares me. Look at Google. The main meaning of Donald is a world type leader. The second coming of Donald Trump scares me. You know what Trump means in, in England? I'll say it in a clean way to fart. And they, they, they blew a Trump. But what does Zephaniah say? It says the day of the trumpet. What does Paul say to the church? The last trump. We're not looking for a trumpet. We're looking for a sound of the trumpet. You know who's looking for trumpets? The trumpets are in the law in the book of Numbers. Well, the two silver trumpets was there? When they got that ram's horn, the uh, shulos, whatever it's called. We're not looking for that in the church age. I'm not looking for Donald Trump. This is not the rapture. It's the wrong voice and it has an E.T. at the end of trumpet. Alarm against defense cities. They still got defense cities in Israel. Against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men. That they shall walk like blind men. Why are they walking like blind men? There's no light. Because they have sinned against the Lord. I forget, it was Ezekiel or Jeremiah, where he went blindfolded, dug through the wall, because the king had his eyes poked out. So you can run both references to Judah in Jeremiah's time. You can also run in Jacob's trouble. Because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust. That's what you were supposed to do with blood in the law. And their flesh as dung. They're going to be piled dead bodies all over the place. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the days of the Lord's wrath. And you read about that. You're not going to buy Jesus off. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. And we'll get that in a moment. For he shall make even a speedily riddance of them that dwell in the land. When the Lord comes back, boom, they're gone. Also, at the end of the millennium, when the devil gets an army, boom, they're gone. But let's look at the fire of their jealousy before we close. Revelation 19. I just love the book of Revelation. I'm going to just show you the fire, not the whole thing. I made two verses. His eyes were as a flame of fire. There it is. His head is many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he had a vest, he, and he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. There's that blood we just read. Now I know another preacher that's another preacher will say, that's his own blood. You're a fool. Because even Isaiah says the blood of his enemies. 